Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest 20 things you didn't know about. Well, it looks like this playlist is getting some good views, some especially good comments as well. So I'm going to go ahead and feature another one here. Once again, to give you an idea of what essentially this playlist is all about, where I'll talk about a particular subject and then find some interesting facts associated with them. Plus, it's a great way to be able to talk about once again, some items that I featured in some of my past YouTube videos. This is something that I've been wanting to do for some time, but this is an especially new, fantastic way to do so. Such is the case with this topic involving gnomes. Now, you've heard me talk about them in the past in some of my playlists, both as an individual subject matter and then also some examples associated with these gnomes. So again, this is a fantastic way to amalgamate everything in one one area and then talk about some new things associated with gnomes as well. So let's go ahead and let's do that here. And for this video, I'm going to feature 20 things you didn't know about gnomes. And then I'll give my own thoughts and opinions on each one too. So here they are once again in no particular order. Number one, they are very diverse. So much like humans found throughout different parts of the world, there are different species and variations of gnomes found throughout different parts of the world too. In fact, it seems to tie in to the fact that based on the people that are living within a known location, then that's their version of gnomes. They also have different names too, and then others have appeared much longer before, and others are more recent as well. So definitely a good spectrum of different types, very diverse set of gnomes found throughout the entire world. Number two is this, their origination point is varied, but it's commonly believed that it was in Scandinavia. And in fact, they've been there for a long, long time. There is no 100% idea of exactly what that time period is. But to give you a further clue, eventually other parts of the world started to discover these gnomes around 1,500 years ago. Now, again, this doesn't mean that they existed just 1,500 years ago. They could have been around for a much longer time but that's when other parts of the world started to encounter them. But otherwise, it seems like their main origination point is Scandinavia. And in fact, they're known as the Tomte in Swedish and the Nisir there in Norway. But again, if you wanted to point towards one spot, it seems to be the magic location is Scandinavia. And then number three, touching on several items or the beginning of several items as far as their origination in terms of beliefs is this. According to some beliefs, gnomes originate from the soul of the very first person to own either a farmland or the space in which that gnome is found. In other words, once a new area is habitated by someone, that very first person, whoever that is, once they end up passing away, then somehow, some way, they end up becoming a gnome. And then that ensures that they themselves are providing continuous care of that space that they dwelled back when they were living. That's at least one belief. So that ties into them basically staying around that location going forward for who knows how long. Number four, again, touching upon beliefs, is this. Another point of origination from them happens to be from the mind. And what I mean is this, especially tying into, again, Scandinavia or other areas around that uh, location during the harsh, very cold winter months, especially, there were times when people were basically by themselves in their farmland for long, long time. So they didn't have anyone else visit them. And then also just due to the spacious nature of their farms and the nearest persons or people being so far away, this created an isolated nature. And so the belief is that eventually gnomes came into existence from people's desire to be around others. So when somebody wouldn't be seen for months, in other words, magically, somehow, some way, gnomes came into existence. So again, that's one point of origination tied mainly to the fact that people 
just basically got lonely. Number five is this, yet another belief as to their origination is this. They came from a species of miners who actually lived underground. So who knows how long they were there or what time they started, but these species of miners lived there for the longest time ever. They have an especial affinity towards the earth in themselves itself, and then eventually they decided to come out from underground and either by accident or on purposeful stances, they ended up helping the humans that were surrounding them. So if you go by that notion, they were truly cave dwellers or some other type of creatures that just lived completely underground and then eventually came up towards the top. Interesting, though, if you go by that specific aspect, how they don't have the physical characteristics you would think of an underground creature would, like in other words, either a blind status or very, very large nocturnal type eyes along those lines. And yet number six describes yet another origination point. This one more on the fantastical level that has to do with this. Some consider them to be actual elementals. So they are true spirits of the earth. In fact, the notion of fire, air, water, and earth you could think that these creatures are in turn spirits of the earth itself. And when that happens, they somehow be, were able to dwell on the earth and they become physical representations, the ones that we know of now. And that also ties into them having more supernatural abilities. More on that here in just a little bit. So if you go by that notion, then they'll probably have been around for as long as the earth has existed as well. Number seven, let's talk about their physical characteristics. What's interesting is that they tend to have an almost universal stance. Number one is the fact that they have a very short stature. In some cases, it's only a few centimeters tall. In other cases, about 18 inches. And then in other cases, almost two to three feet tall. They tend to have shorter arms and legs as well. Interestingly enough, some of them are known to have no thumbs. I don't know why exactly that is, but they tend to have one less digit, in other words. They are known to have big bellies, big round cheeks as well. The men having long, bushy beards too. And then they have these bright colored clothings as well. And then having, as far as the universal type pointy hats when it comes to the men. Uh, what's interesting though is that this has morphed over time. Apparently the very first encounters that no had with humans, humans saw them as completely different. In fact, it was more in the lines of small, ugly, nomadic uh, creatures that were basically from the wild, like they wore no clothes and they had no hygiene manners as well. So in fact, in some cases, some encounters of gnomes, people have stated that they have a very pungent smell to them too. You'll know you're in the area of a gnome if it happens to be a wretched smell somewhere around. Number eight, continuing the physical characteristics of gnomes is this. Female gnomes are known to wear different colors of clothing from the males. For example, it all depends on their marriage status. That's interestingly, that's interesting stuff is just on its own right there because it turns out that gnomes go through the procedure of marriage too. So with female gnomes, before they're married, their usual hue tends to be more greenish. So that can include either the hat that they're wearing or that can include the clothing as well. But once they become married, you can tell if a female gnome is married because they tend to have more somber tones. And then also their hair. Their hair is also a big indicator. If you see a female gnome with their hair worn up, that means that they are not married. But if they have their hair flowing downward, then that means that they are married too. Fascinating stuff, right? When it comes to this. Number nine has to do with the attitude that, um, that gnomes have towards humans more on the lines of their nature. And what I mean is this, they are considered very, very elusive. In fact, meetings with these gnomes are quite rare. And then on top of that, it seems that it's pure happen chance, like it's almost accidental. These uh, beings, whatever they are, 
purposefully hide from humans, and they do so very, very well. If you consider that there's probably a very large population of them out there somewhere, the fact that there's not more encounters with humans just shows the talent that they have when it comes to staying away from people. In fact, you should almost consider yourself lucky if you happen to see one uh, dead on straight, like looking at them, because that's going to be something that is very, very rare. So I don't know if that's going to change later on. Who knows? Maybe one day, if you go by the belief that they came from the ground and then they started to help humans afterward, maybe they'll be more open. Maybe they'll be able to have more encounters associated with humans, even areas that are known to have gnomes like farmlands and so on, and people know that they're there, they still have a very, very small chance of actually seeing them altogether. Number 10, talking again about where these gnomes live, they live throughout multiple parts of the earth. And in fact, it ties into more of them living in areas uh, dwelled within the earth itself. Like, for example, they live in meadows, they live in hills, they live in woodlands, they also live in specific trees too. Big rocky areas are known to have um, these gnomes, their homes or villages as well. The key to their success is this, their entrances are known to be hidden. They're only visible to gnomes or they have to do something in order to make sure that the entrance becomes available to see. So if you can find what that is, then you'll have a chance of being able to come across the dwelling of a gnome. And in fact, their habitat usually consists of traditional living quarters. So something on lines of whatever they consider a living room plus separate rooms to live in. There's even the notion that they have supply rooms too. So anytime that there's a harsh winter, not only are humans having stuff like in terms of rooms to keep supplies in and be ready and then have things set for for those coming months. But uh, gnomes tend to have that as well, too. Number 11 is this. It has to do with the amazing uh, uh, attributes tied to gnomes. Number one, it has to do with strength. These gnomes are very, very strong. They are, in fact, up to seven times stronger than the average human. This, despite their diminutive nature, Number two is the other physical feature involving their speed. They can run very fast. This may tie into why they're so elusive. Like, in other words, people can't see them. Despite their small size, they can run up to 35 miles per hour. And then on top of that, number three is their eyesight. Their eyesight is known to be even better than a hawk itself. So they can probably see people coming from a long distance away. And that'll give them the ability to be able to um, skedaddle, to get out of places without someone seeing them or having any chance of seeing them um, in their area. And then also some of them, this ties into more on the lines of the elemental status I was mentioning earlier. Some of them have supernatural powers, which include abilities of magic and then also shape-shifting to even actual invisibility. So those are, again, some of the amazing features that are tied to gnomes that otherwise one would think that um, they would so small in their status and then look almost harmless. No, if you're dealing with a gnome, you're going to be dealing with something that can absolutely do many things much better than yourself. Number 12 is this. If you do run into them, there's several areas that you can have in terms of an experience. Uh, this one has to do with them being mostly beneficial to humans. Uh, this is good. This is a good thing because this tends to be the main attitude of these gnomes. They are seen as good fortunes. They definitely care about the land and by by linkage or by tie-in to the people surrounding the land as well. In fact, anywhere they tend to wander about, it's been known that the soil becomes more enriched, the vegetables and the farms and anything else tends to flourish around that location too. They're also known to help humans whenever they are in dire situations, such as if a human gets lost in a forest, then a gnome has been known to help someone get to an area 
that they are now safe, like that they're able to get out of their predicament. Otherwise, who knows what would have happened to the human too. So that's the very best news right there. These, the, and that tends to be most encounters that people have with gnomes. Um, once they came out from wherever they came from, like from the earth itself or from some other aspect, they decided to just help humans altogether. Number 13, again, tying into their attitude towards humans. Others are known to be more neutralish to along the lines of being mischievous. So they're not really there to help humans per se. They don't harm them either. Instead, they like playing pranks. Apparently, they're known to have a very large affinity towards making uh, pop-ups. Like, in other words, people are wandering about. They'll pop out of nowhere to scare humans and then run away laughing, that type of thing. They especially love playing pranks on children. Like, these are harmless, lovable acts. Like, they're just doing it because it's almost in a nice kind-hearted way, but still it's a prank nonetheless. And another fact that they do is they enjoy getting sometimes people lost. So not to the sense that they're lost as a danger to the to the humans, more not lines of they'll trick a human into going someplace and then once they had their fun, they'll get them back to the out, out of that area, out of that danger, and they'll get them back to where the human was supposed to go. So at least that's another neutral stance. Number 14, uh, talking again about the various attitudes that gnomes have towards human. This is much rarer, which is good. Um, and I'm glad to hear that there's been far fewer encounters as this, but some have been known towards being bad towards humans. Physical attacks is the biggest thing. Um, usually the encounters involve, and this ties in again to their speed and their strength, actually attacking humans. And the usual notion on that is even then, it's not like outright evil. This is more on the lines of gnomes that are threatened by humans or that are purely disrespected by humans, like not having them give the usual respect that gnomes have towards an area and other cases it's causing great damage to the location that the humans are at so something is happening to the forest or something is happening to the farmland they're not liking what the humans are doing there and so it's more along the lines of those aspects other type of behavior that's bad towards humans is they steal things from humans too this can include jewelry or this can include other things within the household sometimes even the farmland itself so again it's much much rarer and that's a good thing and uh, luckily most of the other gnomes are uh, having a more positive attitude towards humans number 15 tying in to, again to stealing things or jewelry in other words it's because of this who knew this apparently gnomes have a affinity towards jewelry in general, they love jewelry. And most interestingly enough, they are excellent gem cutters and jewelers themselves. In fact, they've been known to be the best ones in practical existence. So they can definitely make some beautiful jewelry. They are very talented in that regard. No doubt it goes through how many hundreds of years they've been doing that and passing it along between themselves. So if you happen to have a gnome or see a gnome, um, there's a good chance that you'll see them with some jewelry or some bling. That gives you an idea of how excellent they are in terms of their craftsmanship. And who knows, maybe you might have a good chance of encountering a gnome if you leave a specific jewelry in an area that a gnome is known to frequent as a sign of respect. That could be an area then that you'll have a gnome encounter afterwards. Number 16, another thing that gnomes especially love is this, animals. They love animals. They love animals in the farmland. They love animals in the forests. They treat all animals with great respect. To them, animals are some of the most precious things that are found on earth, and they're known to help out animals as much as possible. Any animal that they see, that is in a dire situation, especially if it's something caused by humans that's like traps or other type of items that an animal accidentally comes across, then they are known to help them out. And when that happens, the animals in turn all see gnomes as their friends. There is a universal 
uh, type of endearment that animals have towards gnomes. And then that way, anytime an, um, an animal sees, any type of animal sees a gnome, they know that they are not in danger. So really great stuff when it was reading that information there. Number 17 has to do with their popularity. So the popularity of them grew based on one interesting fact. Before then, it was more on the lines that people knew about gnomes, but more on a local basis. It all ties into what I was mentioning earlier about different humans, different areas of the of the earth, that kind of stuff. But their popularity exploded with this lawn ornaments. You've seen them, right, when it comes to the garden gnomes. Well, the idea of using garden gnomes began in the 19th century and then transferred over to the 20th century. And then especially in the 20th century, that's when it grew to tremendous height. So the notion of, of gnomes and um, the usage of them and then the popularity of them especially came from that. More homes started to use these garden gnomes, which in turn caused others to use them as well. And then more people started to realize about gnomes about their existence they may not know about their origins or the history tied to them but again they're cute little things that you can put around the home itself and their usual visual interpretations ties into disney's snow white and the seven dwarves once that movie came out then all of a sudden gnomes started to look or at least the garden gnomes started to look more along those lines so you definitely can see them to this very day go across any home across anywhere USA, any street, and then you'll be able to have a good chance of finding these garden gnomes there to this day. Number 18, also tying into their popularity, um, a lot of it is linked to literature and other forms of entertainment works. Like, for example, through various popular literatures, ranging from Lord of the Rings to the Chronicles of Narnia, there have been loose interpretations of gnomes featured in those works. And when that happened and those books themselves took off in huge popularity, well, that in turn made gnomes have more popularity too. And then the aforementioned Disney, Snow White and the Seven Dwarves and other movies also feature them directly or various versions of them, loose interpretations, as I mentioned. Um, and then that just continues to grow with their popularity as well. So interesting stuff. They're here to stay. And it looks like they're going to be here for a long, long time afterward. In fact, number 19 ties into that. Who knew this? But there's actual theme parks linked to gnomes. Like, in other words, the theme itself are the gnomes um, and, and, and what they're doing within the theme parks. For example, in North Devon, United Kingdom, there's a park there called Gnome Land. If you go over to the Netherlands, there's an area there called Gnome Village. And as another example, if you go here to good old USA, Minnesota, there's a park there called Gnome Park. As you can expect, it's probably going to feature a whole bunch of villages of the gnomes and then little tiny gnomes here and there. So you can absolutely go take a little trek if you have a chance and you see one nearby your area. Check it out. Post pictures. Uh, you'll be able to see the popularity tied through multiple theme parks. And then finally, number 20, talking about their physical attributes or more than the lines of their daily activities is this. Gnomes have a special diet. It's in, And one could think that it's um, pretty easy to think what, but it's tied to their living conditions. So them living on the wild or living in areas of farms it usually consists of nuts or mushrooms, vegetables, potatoes, fruits, berries, beans, and so on. Basically, whatever is found in the farmland or in the wild, that's essentially what they eat. They, As far as drinking, uh, one of their favorite drinks is fermented raspberries. It seems like it's more along the lines of something that tastes good to them and then it has a little bit of kick of alcohol as well and then most interestingly enough they are not meat eaters so they basically just eat anything in the wild except the animals themselves so if you want to leave a special treat again to anything involving these gnomes or an area that you know that they're at it'd probably be a good idea to leave something involving a large bushel of these type of of, of food and then that way they'll enjoy it afterward
And then that's it, everyone. I hope y'all enjoyed this video here. 20 things you didn't know about gnomes. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. Post those too. Let me know maybe if you have any suggestions. I'll definitely be happy to take a look and see what else I can talk about afterward. All right, everyone. Thanks again as always. Take care.